que vous reconnaissez à, à l'homme bah, L'homme lui-même. Nous pensons, et ça c'est euh, un des points les plus importants de l'existentialisme, que l'homme est finalement la raison d'être de l'homme, son avenir et euh, la fin même de toutes ses, de toutes ses activités. C'est-à-dire que nous trouvons bien tout ce qui sert aux intérêts, au bonheur et au développement de l'homme et mauvais tout ce qui va contre. Welcome to the very first episode of a series of videos that I decided to call At the Existentialist Cafe, where I'm going to review different coffee blends, talk about philosophy, and share with you some of my future reads. I've got a really nice selection here. I'm going to briefly cover them at the end of this video. Here are the church bells. I think it's a good sign. I hope it's a good sign. After all, this video is going to be about existential philosophy. I believe that existentialist philosophy can really help us with our daily journaling. And I'm going to explore some ideas and some techniques that we can apply to our daily life. The very first part of this video is going to be focused on this wonderful book that I come back to very often. It's called At the Existentialist Cafe, exactly the same way as this series of videos. I'll tell you a little bit about why I decided to stop on this title for this series. It's written by Sarah Bakewell, who is actually one of my favorite contemporary writers. I haven't seen so much sun in England in 10 years joking. I've read many books that pretended to introduce the ideas of the existentialist philosophy in an easy and concise manner, but most of them were written in a very vague, almost mysterious language. I got a feeling when I was reading those books as if writers tried to be vague in order to seem more clever than they are, but in the end they couldn't explain what existentialist philosophy is actually about. This is the opposite of what Sarah Bakewell does. She very well distills the key ideas of the existentialist philosophy and writes about them in a very concise way. When I was recently rereading this book, I realized that the ideas that she explores in the very first chapter can help us in our daily journaling, and I'm going to explore them in this video. Some people dream about traveling to exotic countries, countries such as Japan. I personally dream of time travel, to travel to a Parisian cafe in 1930s where Jean-Paul Sartre, Simone de Beauvoir, Raymond Aron and other artists, thinkers, writers, philosophers sat down in, with a cup of coffee such as this and discussed their genius ideas. This is how the first chapter of Sarah Bakewell's book starts. She tells us about a problem that Sartre and other philosophers of their time faced. The problem that philosophy became very boring at that point. Most of the academic philosophers were stuck with very abstract, very vague ideas that were 2000 years old. Ideas such as what is real and what is not real, how can we define it, all those things that didn't matter in daily life. Philosophy at that point was very stuck. It wasn't moving, it wasn't producing any new ideas, any new fresh perspectives at all. The First World War just ended and people were really suffering and they needed a new way of thinking. In one of those evenings in this Parisian cafe, Raymond Aron, who was a friend of de Beauvoir and Sartre, told them about a new um, philosophical school, a new idea that was emerging in Germany and it was called phenomenology. The purpose of the phenomenology, if we tell it in a nutshell, was that what matters is are the phenomena that appear in our lives, in our existence. How do the things seem to us? How do we feel? And the person who started this new discipline was Edmund Husserl. What was revolutionary about Husserl was his focus on our personal experience, on our own senses. How do we experience our own life? And this opened up 
whole new doors for the philosophy. Hello guys, as I was editing this video, I realized that I skipped a couple of great examples which illustrate how phenomenology can be applied to real life. And the examples that I would like to explore here come from medicine, and they were very well described by one of my favorite writers on medicine, whose name was Oliver Sacks. He was a neurologist, a brilliant writer, he has some really great books, and in his 1984 book called A Leg to Stand On, he described how he was recovering from a severe leg injury that he had. The problem that he faced at some point was that his leg was fully recovered at some point and he could stand, he could walk, he could run. Everything seemed fine from the outside, but from the inside, Sachs felt as if his leg was separate from his body. He described it as if he had a wax leg. And you can imagine how difficult and how strange it was for him to explain to his doctors that this is what he experiences, this is what he feels like. If you would like to find out how they managed to reintegrate the feeling of the leg back to his conscience, I would really recommend this, this book, but this was one of the first times when phenomenology was used in medicine, when the perspective and the feeling of one single unique patient was considered by doctors and then later was applied to other areas of medicine. We have all heard heard about similar cases, about phantom limb pains that are often called, when a patient who has lost a hand or a leg continues to feel their lost limb, their hand for example, long after it was amputated and they lost it. They can still feel the limb itself, the hand itself, and even the pains that they had in it. So this is a very interesting psychological and medical example, and of course the phenomenology goes even beyond this, but it very well illustrates what phenomenology is about and the importance of its discovery by Husserl. Because now, instead of focusing on abstract ideas such as what is real and what is not, philosophers could actually deal with the real life. And this is what Sartre and de Beauvoir started to do. They started asking questions. How do we experience things? What does it mean? And they started creating new frameworks of thinking. And I wanted to read it to you one of the sentences that Sarah Bakewell quotes from Sartre lectures, where he says that there is no traced out path to lead man to his salvation. He must constantly invent his own path. But to invent it, he is free, responsible, without excuse, and every hope lies within him. Essentially, he was throwing away all the Christian doctrine, he was throwing away all those vague philosophical ideas, and he was saying that what matters is your existence, that you invent yourself with your actions every day. And there was another wonderful quote where he says that, do not pay, put any label on me because I'm a work in progress. This idea left a huge impression on my mind when I read this book for for the first time. It once again restated to me that putting label on yourself by saying that I'm existentialist or any other label like I'm Christian or I'm Marxist or whatever label you can invent there limits you. As Oscar Wilde said, to define is to limit and to limit for existentialists essentially meant death. Defining yourself, leaving a label on yourself would essentially mean for the existentialist that you are stopping your potential, you are stopping your future of what you actually can be, of the actions that you can take. In 1950s, Sartre gave a lecture and he brought an example of one of his students who came to him to ask for advice. It was during the Second World War and this student faced a very big decision problem. His father turned out to be a traitor. He collaborated with the Nazis while his brother fought against Nazis and died in the front. This student wanted to go to England and join French resistance fighters there. But the problem he had was his mother. His mother was really ill and was very dependent on him. So this student had to decide whether to go and fight against Nazis to defy his father who was a traitor or stay at home and take care of his mom. For Sartre to make a decision for the student would mean to deprive the student from, of his own freedom. He told to his student that it is a decision that only he could make, 
because it is only his own personal experience. It only his soul and his existence could make this difficult decision. And I believe that this example perfectly illustrates what existentialism is about. It is about difficulty of taking responsibility of your own life. And this is what many people do by adopting religious doctrines or uh, political ideologies. This is what they do. They say, I cannot decide this. Can you decide it for me? It is in those moments of difficult decisions when we define our life. You might ask how all of this is connected to journaling. It is connected in a way that for existentialists, the essence of life was experience. By journaling, we define and focus on that experience. When you sit down, alone with a piece of paper with a pen and you write down about your day about what you experienced with a vivid detail that is important only to you it is in essence your life and nobody else can do it for you nobody else can sit down and write down your own journal there are a lot of uh, ghost writers who can write novels for you but nobody can ghost write your own life this was what gives us anxiety. Life is uncertain. We don't know what is going to happen, but we define it by our own actions, by our own choices. By sitting down and trying to describe in your diary in a vivid detail the parts of your day that are important is a very useful way to stay engaged with life. Very often productivity gurus uh, advise to uh, keep a highlight of the day, of the thing that you will remember this day for. And this is in essence what existentialists were asking us to do. It is by giving you a highlight, by saying that during this day, I this was the most important thing that I experienced. This was a highlight. It essentially means that this is what I experienced and this is what defined my life. This is the first thing that can you can practice. Try to describe vividly as much as you can what you experience. As I said, I haven't experienced a sun like this in England for the past seven years at least. <laughs> this was actually the reason why I decided to call this series of videos uh, at the Existentialist Cafe. Essentially what I want to do is to sit down with you with a cup of coffee and replicate the atmosphere of that coffee shop where Jean-Paul Sartre, Simone de Beauvoir uh, sat down and discussed all those ideas. I will explore more techniques from this book in a future video because this is getting way too long. I wanted to talk a little bit about some of my future reads that I'm going to cover in this uh, in this series of the Existentialist Cafe. Uh, first of all is a collection of John Didion's essays. I really enjoyed reading her White Album and Slouching Towards Bethlehem. This is her collection of essays says, let me tell you what I mean. I'll leave all the uh, links to those books in the description. The next book that I would like to read is called Genius and Ink, Virginia Woolf on how to read. Uh, it is published by Times Literary Supplement, one of my favorite uh, newspapers. And the last book that uh, I would like to share with you is called The Power of Words by Simone Weil. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. I believe that this book is kind of an essential read, at least from what I've heard, uh, especially in our times when uh, war in Ukraine is happening, when we are surrounded by propaganda and each side is trying to persuade us by the power of words for uh, to take their own side. So these are three reads. All of them will be in the description of this episode. The coffee that I was drinking today that has a very smoky taste and is a dark roast is called Hot, Hot Lava Java. Uh, I actually enjoyed it a lot. If you are a fan of a dark tasting with uh, notes of toffee and uh, kind of having a black peppery taste in it. I would really recommend you. It gives you a nice kick. It helped my brain certainly to record this video. I'll leave all the links down in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video.